Hello and welcome to another uh, series of lectures in uh, functional analysis. So in this lecture, we will discuss uh, a weaker notion of the derivative. So this will allow us uh, to differentiate functions that are not necessarily continuous. And uh, this leads later to the definition of uh, Sobolev functions. And uh, they play an important role, let's say in the uh, variational theory of uh, partial differential equations. So as a motivation for the notion of the weak derivative, let us start with uh, the integration uh, by parts formula. So suppose I have two functions, say phi and f, from r to r that are, uh, let's say, uh, continuously differentiable. And uh, phi vanish uh, for all x with a magnitude at least r, for some r that is uh, positive. Suppose I have this uh, integral. So in this case, we have an improper uh, integral. Uh, since phi of x vanish on uh, uh, the region, uh, absolute value of x greater or equal to r, uh, we can restrict this uh, integral from negative r to r. And what if we want to pass uh, the derivative to f? So this would be so applying integration by parts, the product of the two functions, phi and f, evaluated at uh, x equals negative r and x equals r, minus uh, phi of x times the derivative of f of x. So these uh, integrals exist. And uh, in fact, we are here taking the Riemann uh, integral. And uh, take note that the uh, boundary terms vanish since phi of r and phi of negative r are both 0. Hence, this integral can be written as, OK, returning back to the whole domain R, the integral of the product of f uh, of phi and uh, the derivative of f. Okay. So suppose we want to replace f prime by this symbol h. Then the above integration by parts formula leads to the following equation. Okay, take note that these, uh, these integrals make sense, let's say meaningful, even if f uh, and the function h are integrable on the compact set, uh, let's say negative r to r. Okay, so what we did is basically replace this f prime by another function and uh, consider this equation. So in this way, we don't need, in fact, uh, differentiability for f in order for this equation to be meaningful. And based on this uh, remark, we said that it is enough that f and h uh, are only 
uh, integrable on the compact set negative r to r. Uh, because in that case, you can uh, apply Holder's inequality uh, to uh, say that these two integrals are meaningful. And in fact, this will be our uh, uh, definition for uh, the weak differentiability. So this function h here would be our weak derivative in the future definition. Here, uh, the term weak refers to the fact that we don't have any uh, differentiability or even continuity property for each. We only have integrability. Of course, you want to extend uh, this definition to the multidimensional setting, and that's, that is what we do in the following uh, discussion. So to start, let us consider, so all throughout this uh, lecture, omega would be an open set in Rn, non-empty. Take y to be a Banach space. So this will be uh, the values of uh, where the values of your function are located. Now uh, consider a function phi in omega uh, to r. So, or Rn. Uh, in this case, huh, let us just consider a function phi into R. We define the support of phi to be uh, the set of all x in the domain we're in phi of x is not equal to zero and then take the closure of this and of course the closure is taken in the space rn in the ambient space rn okay so with this we now define the function space c not omega so this is uh, the set of all functions in omega with values in R, where in the support phi is a subset of omega, and it is compact. Therefore, uh, note that outside the support, the function phi vanish, vanish. If x is in omega and not in the support of phi. By the definition of the support. Okay, so in this case, in the previous example, you can uh, say that the support of your function phi it's a subset of negative r to r, and this is compact. Okay. So the compactness was utilized based on this uh, remark a while ago. So again, the, the zero here, okay, is uh, justified uh, in the following uh, remark. And uh, this is an example of a function uh, having a, let's say, a compact support. So here uh, you can think of uh, omega as this uh, region here. And uh, the graph of phi, so phi only uh, vanishes, well, or the graph of phi, is non-zero on this uh, region. Okay. So this 
part here would be the support of your function phi. So when we talk about uh, the support, you can think of this as the region where this uh, surface here, so that's the subset of the domain where it supports the graph. Okay, so take note here uh, that uh, the support is a subset of omega and uh, based on this example, uh, let's say it is a compact. Uh, and uh, delta sub delta omega would be this region here. We call this uh, the delta neighborhood of the boundary of omega. And it is defined uh, as follows. So n delta boundary. So the delta neighborhood of the boundary is the set of all points in the domain wherein the distance of that point to the boundary uh, is, let's say, uh, less than delta. OK, so in this case, uh, take uh, we note that if phi is in C naught omega, then there exists a delta such that phi vanishes on this delta neighborhood of the boundary. So you can think of this uh, zero here as zero near the boundary. Okay, so that's uh, the explanation of uh, our notation C naught. We also need uh, the following uh, function spaces. So let us define C naught K of omega. So this is the intersection of, or this is these are the CK functions. So functions that are k times continuously differentiable that have compact support in omega. So k here is a, uh, a positive integer and it can be uh, infinity. So in that case, you have the uh, infinitely differentiable functions. In particular, if k is equal to infinity, then elements of C0 not infinity. Well, other uh, authors denote this by uh, D of omega. The elements of uh, C0 infinity will be called test functions. But uh, that is uh, the term used in a variational uh, theory of uh, par uh, partial differential equations and uh, even ordinary differential equations. So uh, we will take uh, the test functions to be uh, in this class. So another uh, definition we will uh, denote by L1 log omega comma y. So these are the, uh, or this is the space of all, again, uh, we are taking here the Lebesgue uh, Bochner integral. So equivalence classes of locally integrable functions. In omega. And I will define what does this mean.
So locally integrable functions from omega into y. That is, uh, if you have uh, this function f, so let's say, let's say we have a function f from omega to y. Okay. This f is in L1, k, y, for any k subset of y that is compact. So local in integrability here uh, means that uh, your function is uh, integrable on each compact subset of your domain. And again, uh, we will not distinguish, uh, in this case, functions uh, that differ only on a set of measure zero. So to uh, simplify the discussion, we will consider L1 log as, well, roughly speaking, a space of uh, locally integrable functions. And uh, with that, we always identify uh, functions that are equal almost everywhere to be the same in this uh, space. If you apply the holder's inequality, you can uh, see immediately that the LP functions are all locally integrable. P between one to infinity, including the endpoints. Okay, so uh, locally integrable functions are, uh, let's say, uh, a larger class of functions than uh, in LP. Okay. One can, uh, of course, uh, set up uh, or define a topology for locally integrable functions, but uh, we do not need, uh, we do not need that uh, in this uh, discussion, but you can uh, uh, look at that. That uh, so you can make L1 log to be uh, a locally convex topological vector space by uh, defining the topology with a family of uh, seminorms. However, as I said, we will not go into the details since uh, we do not need that topology in the current uh, discussion. So let's start with uh, the definition of the weak derivative. So an L1 log function from omega to y and uh, a multi-index alpha. So here n not is uh, the positive integers including zero. Okay, is said to have a weak derivative. Or more precisely, uh, alpha weak derivative. If we can find another locally integrable function such that, okay, if I take the integral over omega of the product of the partial derivative of f times uh, uh, f of x dx, here, uh, if you want to pass the derivative alpha times, then you have a negative sign, or you multiply negative one several times depending on the length of alpha. So for instance, uh, in, in this example, if you have a second derivative here, then uh, in this case, you will have uh, we, you need to multiply negative uh, one twice 
and you will have a second derivative here. Okay, so in general, if you have a multi-index alpha corresponding to the partial derivative of phi, uh, then this is equal to uh, negative one raised to the length of alpha times the integral. So here you should have, or you would like to have uh, d alpha f of x dx. But let's say that uh, we have this notation at the moment. And this is true for all test functions phi. So that is uh, in C0 infinity. So these are, again, uh, the test functions are infinitely differentiable, having a compact support in omega. Uh, I would like to point out here that uh, here, the integral, integrals have values in the Banach space y. So if this is the case, then we shall write, okay, following the notation for the classical derivatives, then uh, we define d alpha f to be h. Okay, so this definition, again, uh, is motivated from the integration by parts formula. And here, uh, so not in order for us not to worry about uh, the length, okay, how large is the length, we take uh, infinitely differentiable functions so that uh, this makes sense. And uh, in fact, you can uh, see that uh, if this is the case, uh, both sides are uh, well defined. In fact, from uh, Holder's inequality, so if you apply uh, the Holder's inequality on uh, these integrals, you will get uh, the following. So for the left hand side, So here the, do, uh, the norm is taken with respect to the norm of y. So Holder's inequality, uh, this implies that uh, you have the L infinity norm of K phi, okay. K sub phi here would be the support of your test function times the L1 norm of F. Uh, this is finite because uh, what uh, d alpha is uh, infinitely differentiable, so it has uh, a finite a supremum norm on any compact set. And f being locally integrable implies that uh, the norm of f in the compact set in L1 of the compact set uh, corresponding to the support of phi is also finite. And you can do that, uh, do this as well in the second integral. So you, here you now have the L infinity norm of the test function over its support times the integral of your weak derivative h, provided that of course it exists, with respect to the uh, L1 norm on the support of your test function. Okay, so uh, both integrals are indeed meaningful. Quick uh, remarks. Uh, there is at most one weak derivative. By this we mean, of course, almost everywhere. And uh, here we take, of course, the Lebesgue measure. Uh, 
with respect to the domain omega. So, well, uh, if you have, let's say, if H1 and H2 are, let's say, alpha with derivatives, f locally integrable function then from the definition you will get that this integral will vanish for any test function phi Hence, and this implies okay, that h1 minus h2 must be equal to zero almost everywhere. Okay, or put in another way, h1 must be equal to zero almost everywhere. And why is that? Uh, this is in fact. Uh, follows from uh, the fundamental lemma of the calculus of variations. Okay, we will give uh, a quick proof of the fundamental lemma of the, uh, the calculus of variations later in the simple case where uh, y is let's say rn and or what uh, when y is uh, is equal to uh, let's say r so we'll uh, take a look at the proof of this uh, fundamental lemma uh, when we discuss uh, the concept of uh, convolutions and mollifiers okay well, uh, so they, so if you have a weak derivative, then it is unique almost everywhere. Now, for functions in uh, CK, mega y, and k, of course, is a positive integer. The alpha weak derivative, well, up to a modification on a set of measure zero, is the same as the alpha is strong derivative. Here, the adjective strong uh, refers to your, let's say, classical uh, derivatives. In calculus. And this is true for, uh, let's say, any multi index alpha at most k. So this means that uh, for functions in CK or omega, this, so these are functions that are uh, k times continuously differentiable. Uh, the weak derivatives. Well, up to a modification on a set of measure zero coincides with the classical derivatives. So this uh, notation here, uh, agrees uh, to uh, the case of uh, CK functions. Okay. So if it is clear in, in the context, uh, if you are dealing with locally integrable functions, this uh, d alpha f here would be uh, the weak derivative. But as uh, we have stated in the remark, this will coincide with the weak derivative. Okay, so there is no uh, confusion in uh, the notation. Okay, so let me uh, give you some uh, example. 
or some examples. So let us take omega to be the uh, unit ball in Rn. And let us take uh, a parameter s not equal to 0. Uh, define the function f, f sub s. This is a one parameter family of functions. Well, omega to r, so the unit ball to r. So this is the Euclidean norm of x raised to s if x is not equal to zero. So if s is negative, you can take, uh, you have the reciprocal, okay. And if it is zero, then let us say that this is uh, also zero. Then uh, you can show that the j at a weak derivative exists. So this is, equal to the uh, partial derivative or the derivative with respect to this multi-index e sub j. Uh, of course, e sub j is the canonical uh, unit basis vectors. So this is zero elsewhere and one in dj at component. Okay, so this uh, weak derivative exists for all j from one to n if and only if s is greater than one minus n. Okay, so in the case where uh, n is equal to 1, s being positive uh, would imply uh, that this function is weakly uh, differentiable. And you can verify this uh, using, let's say, uh, polar coordinates. So I will uh, leave the details to you. And in fact, Uh, there is an exercise. So if f is defined to be the natural logarithm of the natural uh, logarithm of, let's say, 1 plus 1 over the magnitude of x, okay, for x not equal to 0. And let's say it is zero if x is equal to zero. Then uh, this function f here would be in w1n b zero one. So if you can plot uh, this function here, this would be an unbounded function. Oh, I did not uh, mention yet this function space. So let's say, let us uh, restate that one. So this f here, is L1, the ball with uh, weak derivatives that are also in L1. And for all j, from 1 to n. So your function can be unbounded, but it can be uh, weakly differentiable still. 
So that's uh, the difference between weak uh, differentiability and uh, the classical differentiability. So roughly speaking, you can think of weak differentiability as some sort of a global uh, notion because it relies on uh, the uh, integral while uh, the classical derivative or the strong derivatives, uh, you can think of it as a local notion because uh, it utilizes the definition of uh, the limit of, uh, let's say, difference quotients. So for classical, you can think of that as a local property while, uh, or local notion, while weak derivatives are a global notion. So you are thinking, you are looking at uh, the whole domain. Okay, so this is a part of your exercise. To give you uh, a quick example, another example, let us focus on, uh, let's say, the above example, n in S to be one, and consider the, uh, let's say, the absolute value function. And the unit ball will now be the open interval negative one to one. So let us uh, look at the uh, weak derivative of this uh, function. So as you recall, the graph is this one. According to the above remark, this is weakly uh, differentiable. So let us look at the uh, weak derivative of this function. So the idea is to start with a test function. Negative one to one. To integrate the derivative of f. See, in this case, we are in the one dimensional case. So derivatives will be denoted by a prime. So we want to pass the derivative here. Okay, but, but then, of course, you know that this function here, the absolute value is not differentiable at this point. So we can simply pass the derivative. So what we do is we split the integral according to that uh, discontinuity of the uh, derivative. So from uh, negative one to uh, zero, the absolute value would be negative x. On the other hand, from zero to one, the absolute value would be x. So integrating by parts, you get the following equation. So this is negative pi of x, negative x, x from negative one to zero minus, okay, so if we pass the derivative here, you would get five x times negative one. So that's for the first integral and analogously for the second, you have the following terms. Okay, 
So as you notice here, this one vanishes since, of course, uh, if x is zero, this is obvious, obviously zero. If x is uh, negative one, then this is zero. Here, uh, you of course state the limit. Because phi is only defined on uh, the uh, open interval. So you can think of this as, uh, let's say, phi of x is equal to zero, as x goes to negative one, and it is also zero as x goes to positive one. So near the boundary, take note that uh, test function must vanish. And uh, combining these two, so you'll have uh, the entire domain, Take note that you can include now uh, zero because uh, that's a single point. Well, it has a measure zero, so it doesn't contribute actually to the uh, overall Lebesgue integral. So in this case, you will have, in fact, the signal function of x. Since the signal function is uh, what? So probably let us replace the color here. The signal function would be this part here. This is negative one. That would be the graph of your signal function. Of course, uh, we, here we have a slope one, here we have a slope negative one. So the weak derivative of f is the signal function. Of course, uh, f as well as the signal function is locally integrable. In fact, they are uh, integrable in the entire domain your L1 functions to be more precise. Okay, so that's uh, the classical example of uh, illustrating uh, the weak derivative. So if you want to emphasize in the weak sense. So for this example, uh, the weak derivative coincides with the uh, almost everywhere derivative of the absolute value function. However, uh, existence of uh, a derivative almost everywhere does not imply weak differentiability. An example of that would be this a signal function here. So however, The signal function is not weakly differentiable. So here, uh, the existence of a derivative almost everywhere does not guarantee the existence of the weak derivative. There's a caveat here, of course. You can still differentiate the signal function so that this would be the second derivative of f. And this is two delta naught. Well, uh, in the sense of distributions.
So there is some more general notion of, uh, or a more uh, general notion of uh, differentiability, and that is the differentiability in the distributional sense. So this is even, you can think of this as even a weaker notion of uh, weak derivative. And in fact, uh, the, uh, the definition uh, follows closely to this one, but uh, you are not dealing with functions anymore, but instead you're dealing with uh, distributions. So here delta naught is the uh, Dirac delta uh, distribution or the Dirac delta measure concentrated at uh, zero. And if we have time, uh, this will be discussed at the end of the course, hopefully. Let us now uh, define the Sobolev spaces. So let us consider P from one to infinity, uh, a K, positive integer, okay. Then WKP, omega to Y, so omega is an open set in Rn, Y a Banach space so this is the definition well the set of all equivalence classes of LP functions having LP weak derivatives for all alpha or for all multi indices alpha at most k blend at most k. So weak derivatives are in general only locally integrable. But if your function f is in LP and all its weak derivatives up to order k are also in LP, then it belongs to uh, what we call uh, the WKP Sobolev space. So these are, uh, you can see, uh, subspaces of uh, LP functions. And by the way, uh, you can uh, verify immediately that uh, weak differentiability or the weak derivative is a linear uh, function. So this would be a, a vector subspace of the LP functions. We now, endow this with the norm. Of course, we need to uh, consider separate cases when P is finite and P is infinity. So let's start with the uh, finite case. So D alpha is in LP, so it is natural to take here the LP norm raised this to the power of P, and we take the sum over all multi indices having length uh, or having length at most k. So we can think of this as what? Uh, Let's say you form the weak derivatives in a uh, vector, and then uh, you take the little LP norm of that vector. Well, uh, here I would like to uh, mention the convention that uh, D0 alpha is well, your function. So you're not taking uh, any derivative. So by definition, this would be 
And uh, analogously, in the case of p equals infinity, the weak derivatives will now be in L infinity. And if you take the little L infinity norm, that would be the max. So these are uh, our Sobolev uh, spaces. With this, we expect that uh, these spaces are indeed Banach spaces. So with those assumptions, WKP, omega comma y is a Banach space. That is, it is a complete uh, norm space. So in particular, if y is a Hilbert space, then so is uh, wk2. If p is equal to 2 with the inner product so what is the natural inner product in wk2 so if you have uh, two wk2 functions f and g the inner product is defined in the following way so you take uh, weak derivatives, say d alpha dg. This has value. Uh, this have values in y. So we take the inner product in y. We integrate this over the domain and take the sum over all multi-indices of length at most k. So if your uh, range or codomain uh, are Hilbert spaces, then uh, WK2 functions have a natural Hilbert space structure as well with respect to this uh, inner product. Since uh, that a second statement uh, is immediate, let us prove only the first one. So let us prove that uh, the Sobolev spaces are Banach spaces. So to start, uh, you consider, let's say, so we proceed in a classical way. That is, we take a Cauchy sequence in the space, we prove that it is convergent, and it converges to an element in the space. Uh, according to the uh, norm of uh, the Sobolev space, this implies that all weak derivatives of this sequence f sub j are also Cauchy now in LP. And you can of course, uh, just follow these definitions here, or apply the definition of the norm in WKP. So by completeness, there exists uh, for each alpha, ah, okay, let us emphasize here for each alpha, with length at most k. Now, since LP is complete, uh, for each alpha, there exists a G alpha, G sub alpha in LP, such that the alpha weak derivative of your sequence tends to G alpha in LP.
So let us define okay uh, f to be uh, g sub zero. So this means uh, in particular, so if you take alpha to be zero, then f sub j tends to f in Lp omega. Okay, now we claim that these g alphas are in fact the weak derivatives of your function f. And if you have this, it follows from that uh, from this, since this is true for all uh, uh, multi indices of length at most alpha, it follows from this that uh, f or f sub j, your sequence, tends to f in wkp in the Sobolev space. This uh, again follows again from the definition of the uh, wkp norm. Okay, so this will complete uh, the proof of uh, the theorem once we have established the claim. So let's start with what we know. We know that uh, f sub j's are uh, wkp, so in particular uh, they are weakly differentiable. So let's start with the following note. So note that for any test function, say phi, well, basically using the definition of the weak derivative. So you are now ig ignoring the argument. Uh, in the integration, okay? So this is equal to negative one raised to the length of alpha times uh, this product. So here we just apply, apply the definition of weak differentiability. So we would like to investigate uh, what uh, happens to uh, what happened to both sides of this uh, equation as j goes to infinity. So let us write it down. So this is the limit on the left hand side and we also wish to compute the limit of the right hand side of course provided that they exist which are indeed the case so let's start with the first one so the first one we might expect that since f sub j tends to f LP, then this also tends to this one. And analogously for the second integral. Well, uh, to see this, you just simply apply Holder's inequality. So let us compute the norm, the difference 
of the sequence of integrals to the candidate limit. And, okay, you can combine this into a single integral, applying the linearity of the lebesgue bochner integral. dx. And from here, we now apply the Holter's inequality. So what we know is f is in LP. Omega. This is values in y. And then you have here uh, the LQ norm to omega. Uh, Q is the dual with respect to Q, uh, to P. That is, the, the sound the reciprocals of P and Q is 1. Uh, you can check immediately this. This is finite uh, since uh, what? Phi is infinitely differentiable and it has compact support. And this tends to zero as j tends to infinity from this part here. And uh, from here, we obtain this limit. Okay, uh, that's good. And first, let us correct this remark to G alpha. Uh, because, as we said, we have this information here in LP. So doing uh, the same strategy, if you estimate uh, the integral on the left hand side the x minus the desired limit g alpha dx and if you do the same uh, estimation this will now be the lq norm of omega times uh, the alpha to the derivative of your sequence f sub j times g alpha and lp. Same reasoning, this is finite since uh, uh, phi is continuous and in fact continuously differentiable and has a compact support. This goes to zero as j goes to infinity by the definition of g alpha. Hence, so this difference goes to zero, therefore this tends to this one, as j goes to infinity. Okay, we have this. If we pass j to infinity, that equation, so let's take a look at it. So this one goes to this, and this one goes to this one. Okay, and that would be, this would be the left hand side. And this would be the right hand side. Of course, since alpha is arbitrary, this is true for any multi-index with length gray, uh, less than or equal to k. And this proves our claim. So thus, according to the definition of the weak derivative, so the weak derivative of uh, f exists, the alpha f exists, and in fact, it is equal to g sub alpha. And uh, this is the claim. that we wish 
to establish. And as we have said, this implies the convergence of your sequence to uh, F in WKP. It is clear that F is in WKP since F is in LP. And the weak derivatives here, which are G alpha, are also in LP. And where is that? Uh, according to this uh, part here a while ago. And that establishes the uh, completeness of the Sobolev space with respect to uh, the norm defined here. The second statement, as I, as I said, follows immediately from the first one and the fact that a Y is a Hilbert space. So these are a Sobolev spaces. The next lecture, we will deal with uh, dense subsets of uh, Lebesgue and Sobolev spaces.